NASA and SpaceX, this is the biggest partnership in the space industry now. However, this cannot prevent NASA from being compared to Elon Musk's SpaceX. SpaceX has redefined space exploration with its groundbreaking technologies, cost-effective approaches, and unwavering dedication to human expansion beyond Earth. Besides reusable rockets, this transformation can be also encapsulated by SpaceX's innovative Starship launch tower, a testament to their ingenuity. In stark contrast, NASA, the United States' esteemed space agency, has faced notable challenges in the development of the mobile launcher for its Space Launch System rocket program. Discuss everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. SpaceX launch tower named Mechazilla. This is the giant robotic launch and landing tower that will be literally catching Starship rockets out of the air with chopstick arms sometime in the not so distant future. It's an unprecedented and fantastical idea from Elon and the SpaceX engineers, but this isn't about showing off. This is a purely functional decision for the company. The buildup of the launch pad has been extraordinary. So far, the company is working to complete the third one. To talk about speed, for Florida's first Starship launch tower, SpaceX and its contractors moved exceptionally quickly. SpaceX has begun stacking Starship's first Florida launch tower in less than half a year since the company restarted work on a Starship launch pad located just a few hundred feet away from existing Falcon launch facilities at LC-39 a pad. In fact, instead of stacking each tower section as soon as its bare-bones framework is complete, SpaceX is taking a more methodical approach to its second launch tower. In an apparent attempt to limit the amount of work that needs to be done at Pad 39A itself, each of those segments is being thoroughly outfitted with secondary structures, ladders, doors, walkways, frames, raceways, etc., before stacking. SpaceX may even pre-install most of the thousands of feet of plumbing needed to connect a Starship to ground systems located around 90 meters below it. Once stacked, each section including all those partial propellant and gas lines will still need to be joined together, but that process should be far easier than fully installing all the systems the tower needs to do its job. To talk about operational quality, Mikazala did not suffer much damage after the launch of Starship in April. Besides, only for Ship 25 and Booster 9, SpaceX has stacked them four times as of today. It also took about 40 minutes to witness a complete, 122-meter-high starship. Here's a fantastic time-lapse video showing each necessary step to achieve proper alignment for the stacking of Starship 25 and Booster 9. It's insane how the crane and connectors can move it in such small increments. Immediately afterward, within a few hours, SpaceX promptly conducted a fuel test for the complete starship, bringing it closer to the wet dress rehearsal test. This is a huge change compared to the others, demonstrating SpaceX's rapid learning and development. And the process will be a crucial point to serve Elon Musk's goal of continuous launches in the future. Finally, about the price, the metal launch tower segments are not that expensive. The launch towers have the robotic arms and power to operate them. The NASA SLS launch tower cost about $1 billion. It seems likely that the SpaceX Mechazilla launch towers and the oil rig launch towers cost less than $100 million each. SpaceX will have six operational launch facilities soon. As of 2023, SpaceX operates four launch facilities, Cape Canaveral Space Launch Complex 40, SLC 40, Vandenberg Space Force Base Space Launch Complex 4E USLC 4A, Kennedy Space Center Launch Complex 39A, LC-39A in Brownsville, South Texas launch site. There will be two launch towers at Boca Chica. What's interesting is that Starbase and KSC won't be the only Starship launch sites. SpaceX is turning two former deepwater oil rigs into offshore launch platforms. At the International Astronautical Congress in Baku, Azerbaijan held on October 5 the, alongside many intriguing revelations about SpaceX's systems, Elon Musk also addressed the construction of an ocean launch platform for Starship launches. 
Elon Musk said. We may need to go to uh, an ocean-based like platform. Just if, if, if you're launching, I don't know, 10 times a day, uh, that might be a bit much for even for, even for the Cape. I don't know. But uh, we, so we may end up doing uh, platform-based launches from, from, uh, from a specially designed sort of ocean-going platform. But we, we, we will need to do a lot of launches. So we're talking about thousands of launches per year. Well, SpaceX should eventually have similar numbers of launch towers as the number of super heavy starships. This is if they are launching once an hour. If they are launching multiple starships and super heavy boosters from the same launch tower, then they will need to have systems to rapidly transport a booster or starship off the tower and far enough away for another booster to be placed for launch. At this rate, SpaceX has completely humiliated NASA. NASA's Artemis program has one tower standing and one just getting started. Mobile Launcher 1 ML-1, which endured some significant damage after its use on the Artemis 1 mission last November, has been undergoing repairs and enhancements in preparation for its reuse on next year's planned Artemis 2 flight, the first with humans on board. It is too shame think that NASA spent a decade and nearly $1 billion for this single launch tower. NASA even stuck the 380-foot-tall structure atop its slow-moving crawler Transporter 2 in August at Kennedy Space Center to begin its two-day return to Launch Pad 39B. ML-1 is the ground structure that holds NASA's powerful Space Launch System rocket, and for Artemis 2, NASA has been working to add essential features for the four humans that will be riding in the Orion capsule atop the rocket. It will make its way into the vehicle assembly building for eventual stacking of all the rocket parts early next year. Unlike the space shuttle program, which had a tower permanently constructed at the launch pad, the mobile launchers require the emergency egress systems to be assembled and disassembled between every SLS launch. NASA will also be able to test upgraded umbilical lines, including the flow of liquid hydrogen from a new storage sphere. Liquid hydrogen leaks plagued both dress rehearsals and several launch attempts before the eventual successful liftoff of Artemis 1 on 16, 2022. Meanwhile, Bechtel National Inks, NASA's prime contractor to construct a sister mobile launcher, bolted together the first pieces of steel at KSC for what will end up being the even bigger mobile launcher 2, ML-2, the slightly taller platform, will be 390 feet tall. The need for a second mobile launcher is driven by what will be a version of SLS that's 40 feet taller called the Block 1B. The height increase is due to SLS getting rid of what's called the Interim Cryogenic Propulsion Stage, ICPS used to propel the Orion space capsule to the moon in favor of the more powerful and roomier exploration, upper stage beginning with Artemis 4 a mission currently on NASA's roadmap for no earlier than 2028. The steel trusses and girders will come together as it takes shape, eventually to be assembled at the mobile launcher parking lot that's adjacent to the Via B. When finished, the ML-2 will weigh about 11.3 million pounds and be able to support the Block 1B version as well as a planned Block 2 version of SLS that is planned to have even more power at liftoff than the first Artemis mission which produce 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust on liftoff and to date is the most powerful rocket to ever reach orbit. Bechtel was awarded the original contract to construct ML-2 in 2019 for $383 million with a completion originally promised by spring 2023. Cost increases and design delays piled on through 2022 prompting NASA's Office of the Inspector General to audit the program. Its findings released last June showed the total projected cost was already expected to hit $960.1 million, or 2-1-2 times more than originally planned. Delivery now is officially delayed until October 2025, but the audit suggests even that date won't be attainable. We expect further cost increases as inevitable technical challenges arise when ML-2 construction begins, the audit reads. Given the time NASA requires for additional testing once the structure is delivered, the earliest the ML-2 will be available for Artemis IV is November 2026. What a disaster! More than ever, NASA needs to take steps that are worthy of the weight and expectations for them. Now or never. Do you believe that this agency can improve everything before the next important stages? Please leave your opinions below in the comments section.
And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time.